Awesome. Uh, well, my name is Ishan, and I'll be talking about a product that we're building here in Crypto Econ Lab called Atlas.Storage. Um, and Atlas is, is we're building a decentralized geospatial data platform. So the agenda for today will be, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the vision, the roadmap, and why we think this is an important product to build. And then I will go into the market opportunity um, and specifically into like the Falcon economics and the geospatial market. Also, I think my slides might, might be out of date here. So we'll see if I had a missing slide or not. Um, so the vision for Atlas is to build a, a platform that stores all of humanity's geospatial information on the Filecoin network and make it available via APIs and SDKs and, uh, and integrates and shares other organizations' geospatial data um, to the broader community. And so uh, the second part uh, to Atlas's vision is to build a community that advances uh, geospatial data sets and Web3 native uh, software and technologies. Um, so what does that actually mean, right? So I think there's like a unique opportunity here uh, to make geospatial data more accessible and usable to researchers, scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs. So right now, uh, geospatial data sets are um, really highly segmented in different parts. Um, if you want uh, geospatial data from the US government, there, you, know, it, you can find a couple on data.gov, but they're uh, all over the place and not easy to use. Um, the APIs are not easy, easy to use, and we want to provide an end-to-end -end service that supports storage and computation uh, with smart contracts to unlock use cases that didn't exist before. So uh, what that really means is you can think of an example of where you're like a homeowner and uh, the home gets destroyed by a hurricane or a natural disaster, right? And um, an, an example of where somebody could use Atlas is a property insurance company that has a policy on that home you can uh, get geospatial data, such as satellite imagery or, or um, natural disaster data or whatever it may be, uh, run some computation on it. So in this case, it could be like a machine learning model. Uh, and then tie that, uh, the output of that computation to a smart contract. And then like uh, fulfill a transaction based on the output. So then like in seconds, you could say, uh, well, it looks like three quarters of your house is destroyed. So we're going to pay like X amount um, of the claim, right? And uh, this is like a use case that could be done in seconds or minutes right after um, that da the data is available uh, on, you know, on that property in this example, um, where in like most of these use cases where people are using ge geospatial data to make a lot of like real life decisions, generally these decisions happen in like weeks or months and not in like minutes or days, right? And uh, in these kinds of examples, especially with natural disasters, uh, like days is what... Uh, what homeowners or people who have been like kicked out of their house because of a natural disaster really need. The second part to like our vision is like a community-driven approach, um, where the community is about is passionate about find, finding uh, useful geospatial data sets, uploading them on Filecoin network and making it um, accessible. So like we don't want to be the only people. Like our team doesn't want to be the only group of people who are storing geospatial data on the Filecoin network and doing all the work. We want the community to get involved, community members helping other community members. Uh, and you know that gets uh, is just like a better flywheel for like getting more data onto the Filecoin network, and uh, then the community can decide what they think is useful, as opposed to like us as a team deciding what we think is useful. Um, so, so this is actually a picture of Landsat Nine, which is a satellite uh, that's in in space right now by the U.S. government, uh, by NASA and USGS. So Landsat is a program that was started in 1972 and has been capturing pictures of the Earth for the last 50 years. Um, and started at Landsat 1, we're at Landsat 9 now. And um, the Landsat program uh, in aggregate has collected about five to seven uh, petabytes of uh, imagery and metadata. Um, so like this is a great use case uh, to get this, this large of a geospatial data set onto the, onto the Filecoin network. And so we're gonna start with storing satellite imagery um, and, and making, it, making those uh, images and scenes that are available in Landsat uh, available through retrieval APIs. And then after that, we're gonna go to you know, other satellite imagery, low-flying aircraft imagery, et cetera, um, and then also other types of geospatial data. So you can imagine like uh, climate, water temperature, uh, land temperature, uh, 
uh, land classification. These are all different types of geospatial data sets that exist um, that are really useful to different types of people depending on what the use case is. So like an example uh, is land, land classification is really important for like the agriculture industry and insurance and agriculture and like figuring out like where, um, what crops grow where well. Um, and then finally, we want to partner with existing geospatial data companies to integrate their data into Atlas. So like an example of this, there are a lot of companies that are already um, buying these, you know, buying or downloading these geospatial data sets and then uh, creating proprietary data on top of it. So uh, an example of this could be um, there, are, there are firms that are like building analysis of properties all, all throughout the US or Western Europe. Uh, and working with them where they might be like a Web2 company but want to get into a uh, Web3 business model or have a distribution channel that didn't exist before if they're a B2B company uh, and, and get them onto the Atlas platform so that uh, those, th that data can be accessible to like, you know, the growing Web3 community that wants to build really cool, um, uh, really cool technology or apps. Uh, and then finally, one, one goal that we have is like we're a big, you know, obviously being part of Protocol Labs, uh, we are big on open source and open standards. So like all of this is going to be done in an open source way. We're going to be uh, following open standards such as um, stack or uh, cloud optimized geotiffs. If anyone here is a geospatial nerd and knows what those words mean. Um, so why, why do we think uh, that like Atlas is um, a good idea and we want to store geospatial data on, on the decentralized web? So, one is that geos geospatial data is kind of core to what we do. There's lots of use cases in um, insurance, property, construction, lending, uh, agriculture, where this kind of data is used every single day. Uh, and, and because of that, there's like hundreds of petabytes of geospatial data um, that, you know, that exists out there. And bringing that kind of data to the Falcon network has a lot of like powerful network effects. Um, second, there's like a lot of like physical and virtual worlds that have been integrating recently. So you can think about like metaverses um, or like uh, play to earn games and even, you know, other games where something might happen in the physical world and then there's like uh, uh, something happens in the virtual world, ba virtual world based on that uh, action happening in the physical world or, or vice versa. Um, and so we're able to kind of support those kinds of, uh, you know, products that, that people build. Um, and really like, uh, Atlas's mission really aligns well with like Filecoin's mission. So like if we, you know, we've seen a lot of people probably seen this side a uh, couple times by now, but the mission of Filecoin is to create a decentralized, efficient and robust foundation for humanity's information. And for us, we want to, we are very aligned with that because for us, it's kind of the same thing, but for geospatial data and then making that geospatial data accessible to everyone. Um, finally, the, the economics of the Filecoin network really make it, um, really make it, a lot better to store geospatial data uh, as opposed to like storing it on centralized cloud, uh, cloud computing platforms. And I'll get into that later, but like the Filecoin economics is like a huge boon um, to, geospatial, uh, to geospatial data sets. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about like the market opportunity here and you know why Filecoin is, is uh, great for geospatial data sets and uh, overall the geospatial market. Um, so, like the market size for satellite and aerial imagery is estimated to be 30 billion by 2030, and that's just image capture. So, like when I say image capture, I mean like actual satellites or aircrafts or drones in the air taking images um, and and people reselling those images. That doesn't include uh, the analytics that people do on top of that. And that market size is estimated to be 110 billion by 2026. So you can tell that like. Um, imagery looks like over the next decade or two is going to become a commodity and the real value will be in like the analytics um, that people can get from imagery or and also uh, like structured non-image data. Also like at um, current prices commercial satellite imagery can cost $20 a square kilometer on uh, centralized cloud computing platforms uh, and for you know to that in context the just the US land area would cost 180 million dollars USD per year to store and the world land area would cost uh, three billion. So with Filecoin, you can drop these costs by orders of magnitude, and dr that drives real value because um, if you think about like storing data, right? If someone is, has, is, has a really high cost of storing data, they need to like monetize that data. And if they have to monetize that data, that means that they have to charge some, some price um, where they can like, let's just say if you wanna break even on storage, you're not even trying to make a profit on this. 
um, if you are able to you know, drop the cost by orders of magnitude, you're able to uh, decrease the price significantly to your users or your customers of that data, which means that a lot more people can now access that data. And that, this is where like Filecoin, uh, the Filecoin network really shines for really big uh, data sets because right now like really big data sets um, cost, a lot, it's cost a lot of money to store those on you know, AWS or GCP um, or, uh, you know, or whatever. Um, so, so like a quick recap, recap on this, right? Um, I think like Filecoin is great because it has all this capacity, right? We have as of May 22, which is what five months, four months ago, we had 17 uh, exabytes of, of storage capacity, and there's like hundreds, uh, if not, you know, exabytes of, of geospatial data uh, that is available to store, um, and. Uh, like the combination of storage, computation, and smart contracts is where like we're going to be driving the real value over time because like you know storage is, is Filecoin is great. It's storage is a commodity, but like compute as you know Juan said yesterday, computation and smart contracts is going to be where the real value is generated. Um, so we need a lot of help building this. So if you're interested in uh, in an atlas at all. If you're uh, you know, a researcher, entrepreneur, or engineer who's interested in using our products, um, you know, please contact us, the, uh, the URL, our Twitter, um, and if you're in Filecoin Slack, the hashtag Atlas Slack channel, um, please contact us there. If you're a storage provider who wants to store uh, geospatial data, um, you know, this could be a great use case for uh, large uh, storage and retrievals. Um, or if you're, uh, you know, someone who's super passionate about geospatial data and want to, wants to join the team and help us build, you know, this future that we're uh, envisioning, uh, that please reach out. We definitely need all the help that we can get. Cool. Thank you. Um, and if we have time, I can answer some questions. A brief question. Have you thought about the go-to-market for this? So how are you thinking about attracting people that have data to store to your product? Like what is going to be kind of the public facing, um, you know, function that you Yeah, have? yeah, great question. So um, our, our first goal is to like prove that, you know, this works and we can, we can uh, do retrievals from APIs like relatively fast um, with uh, satellite imagery. So there is Landsat, which is a US, you know, NASA and USGS, and then there's European Space Agency, which has um, satellites that have been flying since 2014 or something like that. And um, once we prove that, our goal is to build a community that people can then, you know, uh, either vote on in some in some mechanism um, and decide what geospatial data sets they wanna they wanna store in Atlas. And uh, so that that's like one path of our go-to-market strategy, and the other path is to work with like current geospatial um, providers who are like in the web two business and they might want like a new, there's like a new distribution channel for customers, um, get them onto the Atlas platform and like kind of connect to their APIs directly without having them to store data on IPFS or Filecoin uh, and get people using, that, using those uh, products. D did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Okay, cool. Do you plan to have a governance token like Ocean Protocol does? Like, uh, great question. We we don't know. So uh, our before we get into stuff like uh, how how the organization of the data will be and the organization of the entity, um, we're we're going to be focused on like more use cases and see and let the use cases drive whether we're gonna you know we would use a token or we would you know maybe go through a you know maybe use Filecoin or completely non-token uh, method. Also, is this data also uh, given or like served to oracles to get it on chain? Sorry, served to what? Oracles. Um, so I, I don't think we'll, we'll probably store the data on chain, but I do think that we will end up integrating with other oracles if they want to, um, if they want to uh, get data for their use case outside of Atlas. Because uh, you mentioned about like metaverse projects or uh, gaming projects which like react to certain like real world geospatial data. Um, I think you said that a few moments ago. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
if that game is particularly on chain, um, so you would require that data, like whatever you have in Atlas dot storage, to get it like on chain, and then it kind of like reacts to a smart contract and like the NFT. If you have a land based NFT, it is like changing its maybe maybe its appearance like in in accordance with a real world data. So for that purpose, like I asked the question. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's a good question. It's just that we're so early that it's like hard to know. Uh, what like the use case will be right so like that is a that is a possible use case in the future um, but for us to for now it's it's we're like more we're at, we're at more simpler use cases um, with like more simpler simpler applications uh, so I'm, I'm trying to think like the the function underneath the hood. Uh, if you've got the, I'm just wondering about the the cold storage versus like caching and ready ready to rock files. Is the idea that you've got like the whole surface of the Earth or the whole surface of the U.S. and then like you're storing that and you're like oh everybody's asking for New York City and everybody's asking for this new construction neighborhood outside of Chicago and so we're gonna cache those. But the actual uh, you know economies. Uh, and cost savings that you're getting are for the cold storage part, right? Is is, is that how it's wor working? And F Filecoin, the cold storage part is where you're getting the cost savings, and then you would still, uh, the tools are still kind of conventional Web2 tools for the caching and serving of, of stuff? Yeah, exactly. So, like, that's exactly how we're thinking about it, but also um, in, like, let's say non-critical business applications, like, uh, they're able to like run these big uh, processes or jobs that like they'll leave the computer on for like six hours right or and they'll uh, have it run. So like being able to pull from cold storage is actually um, at the beginning an okay uh, use case. So like we always think about uh, when we think about like applications, we always think about like retrieval times in like milliseconds or on sub one second, right? Um, but there are a lot of applications where there's a lot of a an lot of analysis happening where you don't need sub one second, and so. Like that would be one great application of this, but also like we do plan on like uh, having like using a, you know a caching layer to make the 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 satellite images or the geospatial data that is being queried the most uh, available through that for really fast retrievals. Nice. Yeah. Well, first. Uh Thanks for the presentation. I think it's a very useful product. It's definitely one that we need, and I know that because I've been on the atmospheric physics. Um, two questions, actually. First one is, how do we plan ahead in terms of uh, integrating when we are transforming the data? Because a common use case is you have to hum the hum data. Sometimes you actually have more than one hum data set. You have, for example, four, and you want to compute a new one. For like, for example, for doing future extrapolations, you need to apply operate operations on each bit that you have. So not only you consume a lot of data, but you generate a lot of data. And it's usually, I mean, the closer you can get to the edge to, to compute and generate that, usually the better. Uh, how do we, I mean, do we have any thoughts about that? Like maybe Atlas could be integrated with FVM or some kind of, Compute, uh, compute solution. Uh, did we had any thought about that? Yeah. So I I don't think we're gonna decide like right now um, what like compute solution we're we're gonna use. But like we you know just in terms of like uh, compute um, teams that like working are working in protocol labs, right? Like. Uh, having integrations with FVM and some, you know, like compute over data teams such as Bakayao is definitely on the roadmap uh, because, and, and, and this is a good point, because the, um, like, the compute jobs are actually more valuable than the, act, the actual data itself, like, and mostly because, like, uh, geospatial imagery is going to, is a commodity or will be a commodity very quickly. And so, like for us, I, at least in my opinion, it's really key that we do build out these um, integrations. Um, and and I don't think that it's just going to be like one compute platform. It, I'm hoping that they'll, we'll be integrating with multiple compute platforms um, for you know because a lot of these compute platforms have their own uh, use cases that are like you know depending on what they want to achieve in terms of performance or or uh, security or whatever it may be. 
um, are very different from each other. And a uh, second question. Um, it's very useful to, let's say, the data sets that have the most valid, uh, value add are actually uh, post-processed data sets. Like, as I said before, you take 500 data sets and you compute a new variable of interest. Like, uh, one common, for example, is about climate reanalysis, where you look at the past, you hunt a model to the past, and you generate this synthetic data. Uh, is it the scope of the, of the project that, for example, uh, we are able also to include those synthetic data sets or those value-added data sets beyond, uh, for example, RAM data sets? I, Sorry, I didn't understand your question. Like, uh, suppose that I'm a user. Uh, I've extracted the data sets, I have computed that, and I did generate a new data set with the same granularity that has way more value because of that, because of the computation that's embedded. Right. Uh, is the platform going to make it easy for a me, as a Mito user to, for example, help publish the, this data set so that others can use? Yes, so that is definitely on the roadmap and that's a technical challenge that we're gonna have to solve because, um, so say like, you know, uh, like you've done some computation and, and like added more data or created more data um, on top of the data set that's already existing. Um, I, I don't know, like, as of right now, like, how trivial it would be to, like, get that data onto, like, the, you know, like, an IPFS node or the Falcoin network without you running, like, a node yourself, which, like, I don't expect, um, you know, anyone to really do, right? We kind of want to abstract that away. So that's definitely on the roadmap, but that's, like, a very future, far-looking thing that we're, that we're going to um, eventually get to. Uh, 